imagine that before watching this video, I'd ask you to sign an agreement that would allow me to lurk you and tell anyone and anywhere who might be interested in what I saw. What pictures you like, you spent on your phone, you that you have the same password, residential address, what time you get up in the morning, you use your flashlight, what streams you watch before bed, what kind of music you, you listen go? to. And of less importance, there are bank cards, photos, messages, threats. You know what I mean, the picture is terrible, but realistic. The thing is, it's not me, but websites, applications and providers. What's interesting, you really sign an agreement agreeing to the collection and storage of cookies. Why cookies evil? How much is your personal data and how not to fool it away? Right after this screen. The idea of remembering the item in the cart, recognizing the user on the site, marking what was viewed came from the very beginning of the internet. The creators of the cookies were purely for good purposes. At that time, there was no particular concept of the danger of storing information, as well as an idea of real scale of the development of the network in the future. How cookies work is described by one of the theories about how their name came about. It's stupid, but in short, this came from the children's story Hansel and Gretel and Gingerbread House where they left physical breadcrumbs and cookies to find their way back. As well as traces left by a user on the internet can also be found by cookies, which trace internet users' activity. The first concerns emerged in 1996, just a couple of years after the introduction of cookies. The Financial Times then published an article in their newspaper about the threat to privacy. The results of the investigations of 96-97, which passed in the US Federal Trade Commission, became a specification that regulates the work with cookies. And one of its provisions was that third-party items should either be completely blocked or at least not work by default. In addition to the ability to secretly monitor user actions, the first versions had shortcomings. For example, they could be intercepted and then used to enter the site with the password of another user. In the course of the evolution of working with cookies, several adjustments were issued that tightened the policy of use, for example, limiting the time of their validity. Well, that was then, but now technologies have changed and the rate of information accumulation is completely different. Overall, the amount of data is growing exponentially. It doubles every 18 months. A company which studies the global information technology market has calculated that from 2009 to 2020, the volume of world data has increased 55 times to 44 zettabytes. Today, as much data is recorded in one hour as the entire year 2000. As you understand, there will be more and more information, which means that it will have to be stored and protected from honest use of course. These modern knights are called ethical hackers. But who needs so many of your cookies and how to process these layers of information? Most of all, information is needed for advertising. The more the advertiser knows about you, the more attractive his offers will seem. For example, the message about those women in your city will appear not when you drink coffee at work, but after a few beers in the bar. Ich verstehe die Wirksamkeit einer solchen Studie. One developer decided to figure out what the user agrees to when press the button agree to the storage and processing of data. He was pushed into this experiment by the thesis that we never read instructions. Yes, everyone is doing it, you can stop scolding yourself. For example, he took the news site's Reuters, which was just at hand at the same time all over. The site rules indicate that they collect data and some cookies necessary for the work of the site that they have partners with whom they can share all the accumulated information. The list of partners included 647 companies and each has its own privacy statement. That is, by clicking on one button you agree you subscribe with 600 different companies, while each has its own set of rules. The list contains recognizable Adobe, Amazon, Google, Huawei, as well as full no-names, the names of which is even written with a small letter. Such a small get-together demonstrates the scale of the interaction of companies with user data. In fact, wherever you go on the internet, all information will not only be stored on different websites of companies, but merged in one place. It turns out a kind of a hidden ecosystem where companies help each other to study the user. VPN and other means of spoofing your original data are also not very effective. Algorithms trained by large companies already easily recognize your specific pattern of behavior, whether you are from New York or even from Oslo. If you like this video and then go to a clean profile under VPN in another browser and like it again, your gimmick will most likely be figured out and only one like be counted. So in principle, one like will also be enough.
Even if you are not intimidated by covered surveillance, the use of your fingerprints for dirty corporate purposes has another problem, specifically the security of storage of this data arrays. News about this has blurred our eyes in so much that we pass them as the same advertisement itself. However, are these leaks and hacker attacks so active? You may still remember the social network Clubhouse at its height. Hackers have leaked the data of 1.5 million users into the public domain. This database contained everything that application collected from its users. Names, subscribers, links to social networks, information about who invited a person and much more. Besides this, all the conversation of users were kept on the social network for some time and came with the help of technology of Chinese startup Agora, which comes into the line with authorities of its country. To mention Facebook breaches is a blue talk. The last time in April, half a billion user data leaked. Phone numbers, full names, places of residence, dates of birth, martial stitches and many other data that for some reason are stored on Facebook. All these hacks are done not only to get through social engineering, access to bank accounts and credit cards. In most cases, data is stolen and then resold. Hackers' revenues from the sale of user data breaches billions of dollars. But of the second part, nothing prevents the companies themselves, which must protect personal data, from snitching them under the guise of hacker attacks. When information falls into the wrong hands, it is easy to say that it was stolen from you and you didn't consciously set it for an auction. By the way, you can even roughly calculate how much your digital footprint costs. The amount varies by citizenship and income, just like the Google AdSense advertising system on YouTube. The CPM for UK will be very different, for example, from the same product for US. If we pass over the complex formulas, then it turns out that Facebook receives a net profit from each user on average $10. Today, you can't hide from constant surveillance and as well as to do something with this. If you want to live with society, of course, and not like a hermit. Even when you are clearing out, going to disappear and live in the forest for good, contextual advertising will show you discounts of tents and survival kits. And the lonely women of your city will wave deliciously after you.